Hi everyone, it's Veronica and I am here with part two of my SCT Crop and Create event, Scrapbook Cards Today. And um, again, this was a virtual event that happened um, at the end of September and I wanted to share with you uh, some of the aspects of it as well as what was created from the kits that were sent. All right, so I'm going to start with my favorite things. And this was called Simply Sympathy. And what we received in the kit were these dies, pattern papers, and we still have quite a bit left that you could create more cards with. This stencil. These are my scraps that I failed to put into a Ziploc bag. Of course, those won't fit their bigger. And this um, stamp set. I love, 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 love the sentiments. My shoulder is here for you to lean on. Please know that you are not alone. I'm holding you close in my thoughts. I hope you're doing okay. I have no words. Hugs. And the last one is, my heart breaks for you. So those are sentiments that I do not have. So I really like those. Okay. Now she did mention during the uh, class that some people would probably look at these and think sympathy for cards like this. But I thought they were kind of cute. And I just didn't think sympathy. I thought um, thinking of you cards as well. So here's one. And I think those flowers are adorable. Insides are not finished. Yeah, right. The insides are not finished on these. And this one has a belly band. And there was a sentiment put in here, and you can do whatever you'd like on the other parts. So that was one I think in particular that she was talking about that people probably would say, well, that's not really a sympathy card. You use that style as a sympathy, but again, thinking of you. And this was actually the first one that we did that I actually have not put on a base. Wow, okay. My heart breaks for you. So that's, a, oh no, 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 no. Okay, <laughs> now that it's moving, this is where you would write your message. So you're, you can put this on a base, but you don't have to. And I love the ink blending. I did not buy their inks either. Used what I had. Okay. So that was my favorite things. All right. And then Gina K Designs. And um, one thing I did not mention that they kept emphasizing during the entire event was first of all, not to stress. If you get it done, you do. If you don't, you don't. And that these are practice cards. So if you didn't get them right, you just go back and do it again. So that was, um, that gave some relief <laughs> because initially when I started, I was like, oh, I only got one card created. But that was okay. All right, so this is Gina K Designs. I did buy her ink cubes. So I used exact colors that she had. All right, and in her kit, we ended up with a stamp set called Beautiful Day. Oh no, these are the... Um, the dies. I didn't see them because I had put it on a magnetic. Well, she included a magnetic sheet for them to go on, which I thought was pretty nice. So we have the dies and here are the stamps. All right. A stencil. This was included in and there was a manufacturing error on one of the stamps and she did go ahead and include that in. She realized it when she got it back and that was it right there. The stamp is here 
and all these little pieces were separate and she knew that here they are right here would be a nightmare so she had it redone and had all that put together this stamp set and these were her ink cubes that I purchased okay so her cards were really cute and we did a technique called kiss which I will show you but this is the first one we did some ink blending with the stamp set and here's that kiss technique on here which gives texture to your stamped images so of course you know you had to have a stamping platform like the misty or something and once you ink the stamps you would go back and we took that grid stamp and put a darker shade of ink on there and then just uh, kissed it so to speak to the images that we already had so I think that turned out so pretty and this is the last one really really cute and that's that grid right there and right there behind that piece so those turned out really pretty all right and then we have Simon Hurley I remember Simon Hurley when he was a young boy and he was using his cricket. and I think Audrey said he's 29 now and look how far he has come but we have the items for his kit now I did buy his inks one of them was out of stock at the time so I want to go back and purchase that one but these were his inks they do not come in cubes his was called creative card making um, we had this cute penguin stamp set super cute the coordinating dies for the penguins this stamp and layering stencil and there are two stencils in there and he has what is called astro paste and you can see the sparkle just from the outside of the jar but that's the astro paste so he gave us two colors but when you order the jars won't be this size it would be a one ounce this is the one ounce I think it's a two ounce when you order and this is the other one. I don't know if you can see the sparkle in that one. This one is called Frostbite. And this one is called Clear Skies. Now, I have never really been a mixed media person, but doing all of these cards and techniques, it actually was a lot of fun. I just couldn't stand <laughs> the mess, and that was why I never really got into it. But these are the cards. Now, again, we did three cards in each class, but in Simon's class, we did four. So, this was the first one. Isn't that penguin cute? And you even stick your finger in the paste to put a little sparkle on the gift box. But look how that turned out. And this glitter does not fleck off at all. Once it's on there, it's on there. So that turned out really cute. Here's the one where we use that stamp. And what we were doing was just rotating the stamp as we were going along. And then, uh, of course, we did some ink blending. And we used our finger in the paste to put that on the balloon. Here's another. Love the color. And we just blend it around the edges. And in order to color the scarves and earmuffs uh, and hats on the penguin, we used the inks and just added water. We had, um, and just used it like that with a small brush. And then this is the last one. 
and we used Astro, I think we did a double layer of the paste here. And with this one, which one was it? It was this one. We added the ink to the paper and then sprayed it with water. So it really had to be saturated. And then we, what did we do? Once we saturated that paper, oh, when you put your um, stencils and stuff down, you had to put a paper towel on top of that and make sure you gave it enough pressure. But it turned out so pretty. The first time I did it, hot mess. <laughs> but I tried it again, and this is how it came out. So that was really cool. All right, and then we had Kathy Zilski and Concord and Knight. Hers was called Birthday Bonanza. They included the inks in their kit. So that was a really cool. All right, and these are the inks. The colors are so pretty and the pattern, the uh, cardstock, which they included, gorgeous. Y'all know I'm a paper tray ink fan, a big fan. <laughs> I love, love, love. But I have been exposed to some different um, companies' papers. Wow. Thoroughly amazed. And we'll be purchasing. But I will never leave my paper tray ink. All right, so we got the inks for that. The stamp set. The stencils. And... Look at the colors of these papers. Look at that. Pretty, pretty, pretty. So extra paper to do more designs with. Oh, and I left out some. These are the ones I did not cut down. We just cut them down. We had full sheets, but we just cut them down to make die cutting easier. So we have all this paper left. And then this is the die set. And this is a cover plate right here. Really nice. All right, and these are the cards. This um, was actually the first one that we did. Look how pretty that is. And with that cover plate, the circles and things are right there. You can kind of see where I went off a little bit there for you to put that on. We added the stencil here and did some ink blending. That turned out really pretty. Yeah, we popped that up. So this was, again, all the cards are A2. This was the second one. Ink blending again on this piece. Didn't you fill in any of that, but I think that is pretty just the way it is. And then this was the one using the stencil, more ink blending. It's gorgeous. All right, and then the last one that I got completed was Honeybee Stamps, one of my favorite stamp companies. And this was called Home for the Holidays. So we, we were creating Christmas and she used the Distress Oxide inks. And what we've got in this kit was this stamp set. And it's called What's Cooking. You always get a layering guide with her dies and things. And these are leftovers that I had. They did include some uh, pattern paper. Here's a sheet left. There's one. 
and I love the weight of this cardstock. And the big piece. Uh -oh. I think I must have put that in. Okay. So. Yeah, I did put that in there. Is this, that's it. Look at the size of it. Audrey was saying typically they put theirs in nice uh, packaging as some of the other companies did, but because this was so large, they could not do that. And there is the stencil in here which is this okay so these are the cards from there so this paper was printed just like that all we did was add the mixer the uh yeah the mixer the whisk the rolling pin the canisters the mitts and the piping bag Oh, and some gingerbread people. And I used my um, gel pen to do those white pieces. And that's when you would use the stencil as far as the bowl was concerned, the canister. And then here, because they were indentions, all you had to do was go through the lines and do that. So that was the first card. The second one. We did some ink blending. Lots and lots of ink blending in these classes. But that turned out really, really cute. And this last one, I could not bring myself to put on the card <laughs> base because I just like it the way it is. This was the card base, and this is supposed to be on it. I just couldn't do it, y'all. I just love this. I love it, love it, love it. I probably eventually will, but listen to that. And these doors open. The designs in the doors are beautiful. I used the stencil here and did that design with some white ink. And here you could add more bowls, canisters, whatever you wanted to use. I saw one lady who posted hers. She didn't put the shelf at the bottom and she used the stamp baking spirits bright and embossed that but of course you know you would have to do that prior to putting this top piece on it turned out so so pretty love 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 it and I think they're releasing other pieces to go with this um, in the upcoming weeks all right so that is what I got completed and now I'm going to share with you the ones that I have not done. Okay, these are the kits that I did not complete. I won't go through everything that's in them. Uh, I'll do that once I get them um, finished and share with you. But this is Picket Fence Studios. And it was called Clean and Purposeful Mixed Media Friendship Cards. Okay, and they included this paper glaze. Stamps of Life. And this was Stand Out with Stand Ups. Crafting Autumn Magic with Hero Arts. LDRS, watercolor and 3D embossing. You have to have gilding polish for this one. Sarah Davies, the Crafter's Companion, and those inks are included in the kit. And Christopher Allen with Brutus Monroe. And this is Look For Me in the Leaves. And that ink pad is included. It has three different colors on one ink pad. And um, additionally, there were two other mini classes. This is Altenew. 
and this one is the Olo markers. We got two markers. And I think each marker has two colors, yeah. So that is the end of this video. Oh, and I have another brush in here. And I think, you know what? And I didn't say that with um, Honeybee. We ended up with some blending brushes. Here's one here that goes with this last one. But Honeybee had blending brushes also, and I think I must have had them out cleaning them or something, so I did not pull those out. But you received a lot of product, which was amazing, and things that you can continue to use. So again, registration is going on now, um, and it ends at the end of October. Just go to Scrapbook Cards today. You can see who the vendors are, and uh, it'll give you more details about the upcoming event in March. But you have to register now if you choose to do it. Thank you all so much for watching. Happy crafting!